In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this really cool console or cantilever building, however you want to call it. Uh, I think it's a really cool design and I thought I would use it for this really cool kind of quick, uh, fast paced gameplay Revit tutorial. Uh, if you want to get kind of slow, step by step, in depth explanations about Revit, uh, you can check out my courses, but this is going to be quick and fun. Uh, now I'm going to be showing you how to create everything. So we're going to start from the bottom construction of the floor. I'm going to be showing you how to place the walls, the curtain walls, how to place the columns, the slanted columns, how to create the roof, and then most importantly, how to create the foundation, which includes the back foundation as well as the front foundation that holds the V columns and the chain that holds it all together. Now, this chain family that I'm going to be using, this is part of a previous tutorial. So if you want to know how to create a chain in Revit, I'm going to be linking that up in the cards above and in the description of this video. So if you're interested, check it out. So now let's jump into it. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit, as you can see, I have laid out just some basic elements to help me with this design. Uh, and I'm going to start from here. So the first step is to lay out all of the beams at the bottom. So I'm going to go here to the structure tab, click on the beam tool, and then let's pick out the correct beam size. And I'm just going to be using this one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and go from here all the way to the other side up to here and then hit the escape key a couple of times. Now I want to move this beam to the inside. So let's just use the move tool for that. And then let's just move it in like so. Then you want to select it and let's just mirror it to the other side like this. Now let's go back to the beam tool and let's add an additional beam here going in this direction. So we can just go from here to here, hit the escape key a couple of times, and then let's just move this one back in like that. And then I'm just going to copy it to the other side, just like so. So place it here. Perfect. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Now I want to move to the inside. So let's place some inner beams. So for that, let's go again to the beam tool, and then I'm going to switch to the smaller one. And then here, I'm going to use these reference planes here to place the beams inside. So I want one here, one here, one here, and the last one will be here. Finally, I want to have some sort of an kind of X style beam here. So for that, let's go from the end point to the end point and then repeat that on the other side. Now this may break some of the original beams. So let's hit the escape key a couple of times and let's just fix them up. So we want these to go to the edges. We want this to go to the edge as well. And then these, I just want to extend over that just like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cope it. So as soon as you extend it, you then go to the modify tab, you find the cope tool, CP is the shortcut, you click on the beam and then you cope it. So again, click on the beam, cope it and repeat the same process here. Uh, now for the ones in the middle here, we want to fix that one as well. So first let's split one of these. So I'm just going to find the split element tool, split one of these, hit the escape key a couple of times, and then let's extend them to the inside and then use the cope tool. So cope it like that. Now, finally, we have the issue with this little gap here. So for that, I'm just going to make a big selection of all of these. And then let's go here to the uh, coping distance and set that to zero, just like this. Okay, I think I didn't cope this one. So let's fix that one like this. Okay, now I'm just going to be repeating this entire process for the rest of these beams. And I'm just going to speed it up because it doesn't make sense to watch that repetitive process. 
Okay, and now we have our floor structure completed. So let's open up the 3D view just to see what that looks like. Now here, I just want to drop all of these inner beams down. So I'm just going to select one of them, right click and then go to select all instances in view. And here in the properties panel, find the Z offset value and type in minus 15. Perfect. Okay, so now once we have all of these in place, let's go back into level one and let's place some walls. So I'm just going to open up the wall tool. And then for this wall from level one to roof, I'm going to start from here and then extend it all the way to the other side up to, uh, let's go up to here. Okay, perfect. Hit the escape key once and then let's go from here all the way up to here and then hit the escape key a couple of times. Now for the next step, let's add the curtain walls. So I'm just going to go here to the wall tool and then let's pick out the storefront 80 centimeter one. And then here, I'm just going to go from here to here, then from here to here, and then from here up to here. And finally, one more small segment here, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times, select these curtain wall segments, and then I'm just going to mirror them to the other side, just like so. Go to the 3D view and just double check what that looks like, and it's looking really good. Now let's add a floor. So I'm just going to go back into level one, and for the floor, I'm just going to go to floor, 150 millimeter type, and let's just place it with a rectangle going from here, all the way to the other side and then just hit finish, go to the 3D view just to double check and see how it's perfectly fit inside of that kind of beam with the structure below and then the floor above. Looks really good. Now let's add a roof over this. So for that, let's go to the roof level, zoom in a little bit. Let's select the roof. I'm going to use the warm timber roof. I'm going to place it as a rectangle and then I'm just going to follow the outline of the building here and then the roof is going to go all the way up to here and just hit finish, go to the 3D view and just double check if everything looks correct and it does. Now it's time for columns. So let's go back into level one and here I'm just going to be placing four simple vertical columns uh, on this building. Now, once we have those columns in place, it's time to uh, place the slanted columns. So I wanna have slanted columns that go from here to the roof. Now for that, let's open up the east elevation so we can see the building from the side. So I want the columns to go here. So what I'll do first is offset the, this by the value of kind of half column or thereabout. So I'm just going to copy this and then copy it. Let's go with 12.5. Uh, centimeters, just like that. And now I want to go back to level one just to see yeah, everything looks correct. And now let's go back to the east elevation, go to the column tool and use the slanted column, use the same type. Now here, just for the base cut, you want to set it to horizontal as well as the top cut, which you want to set to horizontal. Now let's draw the column here, going from here to here. And that's it. So now let's go to the 3D view. We can see it's a little bit slanted, but that can be fixed in level one. So let me open up level one here, zoom in a little bit, and then let's see. So I can just use the align tool here just to align it like this, kind of at the center. Yeah, seems to look okay. Let's go back to the elevation. So here uh, we can just get rid of that offset like so, and then we can also move it in just a little bit here, just like that. Perfect. Go back to level one, and then let's copy it to the other side, just like this. Perfect. Now let's go to the 3D view, and here I don't like the fact that the roof overhang looks like this. So I'm actually going to be fixing this by creating an in-place component, a roof component, and just using that as a void to carve out this roof shape. And this is what that looks like. So as you can see, it looks a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. Now, moving forward, let's add uh, some additional curtain walls here to close out this building. So let's go to level one, architecture, wall, and I'm just going to be using the regular storefront curtain wall. And then let's place one segment perhaps here, flip to the other side, just like that. Hit the escape key once, and then one more perhaps like this. There we go, perfect. And now our building is really starting to take shape and now it's time to move to the foundation. 
So for the foundation, let's open up ground minus one. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to architecture wall, pick out a 300 millimeter wall. Then I'm going to set a location line to finish face exterior. And for the base constraint, let's go with minus one top constraint level one. However, I'm just going to give it a minus 35 centimeter offset just because we have that 35 centimeter beam. And now let's use the rectangle tool and go from here all the way to this side here, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times, go to the 3D view, and this is what that looks like. Now for the fun part, which is actually creating the foundation for the V uh, beams, which are going to hold this whole thing on chains. Well, for that, let's go here into, uh, let's go to ground two, actually. Yeah, this one. Then let's go to structure, find isolated, and then I'm going to start with this one and place it just like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, and now let's offset that or move it by 10 centimeters off to the side, just like so. Then let's go back to isolated, pick out the second one and place it in the center basically. Hit the escape key a couple of times, open up the east elevation. Here we can see the second one down here and let's just move it all the way up. So now if I go to the 3D view, this is what that looks like. Now let's go back to the east elevation. So here I'm going to, oops, this should be a little bit further down like that. Okay, so now let's go here to structure, go to column, and we're going to use a slanted column. This is this is the size. And then I'm just going to go from here all the way up to the roof column. And then where that intersects with this, just like that, then I'm just going to move it a little bit here off to the side. So just like that. And finally, on top, I want to have kind of a perpendicular cut. So let's find the uh, top cut style, perpendicular, just like that, perfect. And then let's mirror this to the other side. So I'm just going to use the mirror tool here, mirror it around this, and we can actually move this in a little bit now when I think about it. Yeah, so I think this should be it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so now let's go to ground one, just to see where this is. I'm going to turn on fine level of detail, and then I'm just going to change the view range to unlimited so we can see below. Okay, so these I want to center on that beam. So I'm just going to move these in a little bit like that, just like this, perfect. And now, as I said, time for the chain. So for the chain, I'm going to go back to the east elevation. I'm going to use some reference planes. So let's go with ref plane, starting from here perhaps. So it's going to go up to here then another one from here to here, and then another one from here to probably somewhere here. Okay, so I want my chain to follow this. Okay, so uh, to place those chains, what I'm going to do first is find my ground minus one. Here, I'm going to add a ref plane just like this. So just a ref plane where those chains are going to be hosted. So just like that, and then I want to name that ref plane. So this one, let's name it the chain plane. Hit enter, and then let's go to back to east elevation, select first the work plane. So let's set the work plane to chain plane. Okay, now let's go back to component, and then let's place it on that work plane. So first click here, second click here, final click here and then go from here, horizontally, two clicks, three clicks. And finally, for the last one, from here, one click, two click, three clicks. Hit the escape key a couple of times, and then this is what we get. And now, of course, this is just going to be copied to the other side, so I can just select all of these elements, so the chains, the foundation, everything, go to level one, and actually, I'm just going to mirror this, so let's use the mirror tool, mirror it to the other side. And yeah, that looks perfect. So now we have the chains that are holding the 
uh, building in place. As I said, these chains are from the video that was released recently. Uh, and I'm just going to be leaving a link to that video up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Uh, and I think that's going to conclude this project. I think this looks really, really good. If you want to get access to this Revit project file or any of my other Revit project files, you can find all of that on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.